Hi, my name's Michelle Zuccolo and welcome to my Bayside studio. Today I'm going to give you a brief workshop just exploring some aspects related to drawing the still life. I think during these colder months we're finding ourselves inside a little bit more and that gives us a chance to look at objects around us and select a nice group of items to put into a still life composition. I think there's two types of objects you're looking for, organic vegetables and fruit and man-made objects such as glasses, teapots, cups. So I'll just go through a few basic exercises today and hopefully you'll be able to test those ideas and see if that's something that you can incorporate into your language of drawing. One thing I'd like to draw your attention to right at the start is just the position that you might hold your hand for drawing. Uh, I think many of us might have been trained to hold the, the pencil or charcoal for uh, writing. So for example, this is how I would hold that pencil to write the word apple. Now if I'm going to draw an apple, I'm going to use a completely different position. I'm going to keep the pencil back here and by doing that it gives me more freedom. I'm able to build up lucid marks and get more of a, se a sense of rhythm. So when I'm looking at some still life objects, first of all I check the lighting because the lighting can provide a great deal of information about the form of the object, particularly the contrast. It's going to show the major planes. You can see the light coming on this side, casting the, you know, you've got your darker shadows on the other side. So I think about the lighting and I also think about perspective. You certainly don't want to become too mathematical with your drawings, but it is helpful to have a bit of an understanding about what the object's doing. I like to think about the axis, which is an imaginary line through the centre of the object. So with something like this pepper, that, that axis is vertical. However, if it's lying down, the axis is on a horizontal. And if it's on a direction like that, that axis that you're going to set up is going to be on a diagonal. So I'll just move that. That's a plastic pepper out of the way and we'll have a look at some actual fruit. So what I've got here in this book is just some still like objects that I've been drawing around the house, the organic forms with the seasonal fruit, which is, uh, they're really good to draw. And these more man-made objects, which are more structural, such as the glass, plates, teapots. Uh, glass objects can be good, you can explore the shadows. Sometimes I turn an object upside down, it just makes me look at it perhaps more accurately. And I do have some taxidermy animals in here that I draw from time to time. So just to come back on this page, and I'll pull one of these apples in front of me. I've got light on this side. I'm thinking about the form, the perspective. So I, I'm thinking about that axis that I mentioned earlier. So I'm going to come down here, I'm thinking about coming through the core of the fruit. And what I like to do at the base is set up a bit of a cross down there, which helps me think about the three-dimensional form. So I like to start off with fairly loose structural lines. And later on these can be removed or they can be incorporated into the drawing. So as I start to develop this I'm thinking about the width of the apple and the height of the apple. Everything's an approximation and I'm putting it down thinking well I might change this later on. Nothing's final. I'm certainly avoiding a solid outline because I think that leads to the suggestion of a flat cartoon shape which isn't what I want. Okay, So I'm thinking about this little core here, this little stem on the apple and I might just indicate where that's going, use that for reference. 
So the marks that I'm going to make, I want to reinforce this feeling of going into that valley in the apple. Now today I've got a really good shadow underneath that apple and when you establish that shadow it can be quite helpful in creating a sense of space around the object. Often there's multiple shadows so you certainly need to be careful of that. So I'll just slightly develop that shadow and I can come back to it later on. When you're looking at shadows, just look carefully at things like where it's very dark and where it fades out because that'll create a difference in your drawing. So it's very important to think about what's closest to you and start to develop that area. So I'm going to start to put some contour lines in there and show that major plane change from the front of the apple to the side. Adding things like texture is uh, quite helpful in building up the form and creating the particular character of the object you're drawing. But it's something I tend to leave till a little bit later in the drawing, until I've established the form. So I think it's good to have a combination of curved lines and angular lines. So I'm going to emphasise those now. So I'll just develop that shadow a little bit by putting some lines in a contrasting direction. And you can see I'm flicking this pencil around into different positions, which is why I'd ask you to consider not holding that pencil in that writing position. This paper is fairly thick and in a sense it's quite noisy to draw on. I do change pencils when I'm working and I also change charcoal when I'm making a charcoal drawing.
I tend to be someone who uses a lot of line and I know some people favour tone so that's personal choice and your personal language so to speak. So I've mainly been using a putty eraser lately because I think you can lift areas out and blend the line work. Use it as a tool. You can also use it to build up the form. So I think I might leave that apple and go on to some other objects. So just to refresh, we had the axis, built up ellipses, which are circles in perspective, avoid a fixed outline. Think about the perspective. and have those lines emphasise the form. It's good to weight your lines down at the base, just to give a sense that the object's on a ground plane and weighted. Okay, so moving on to a man-made object, which are often more structural. Again, I'd start off with that axis. So this will clearly be just a vertical line. Again, I'd put that cross down at the base just to help me develop the ellipse in perspective. Now when drawing objects like this, it's good to just think about different sections and not the outline. Once you're dealing with an outline you get out of proportion very quickly. So I'll just make some sweeping lines up here and look at this first section of, at the stem of the glass. So this is where the construction becomes much more apparent. And I say to people, look, don't worry if it's out of proportion. As long as you're getting a bit of an understanding of the construction, that will help. And you can just practice and improve over time. So I'm looking at the dome part of the goblet. throwing some ellipses in there to build up the volume. It's good to actually have water in a goblet. That gives you the sense of the volume. Now one thing you can check by using this axis, you can actually measure from side to side and just check how your item, your object is going. You don't want to obsess too much about the mathematical side of things though. So look, I might just have a look at some of the facets in here of the glass. And of course I've got to think about the perspective in these little pieces.
It's important with the sides of these ellipses that you don't run it into a point like that. Try and keep that rounded. So you could start with something quite simple, just like a glass. And the good thing about drawing a transparent object is you can get inside and feel around that object, which is going to give a sense of the volume. So you're drawing through the object as if it's transparent. Just on the lip of these objects, it's, it's good to double up that line because that will give a sense that it's a three-dimensional object. So with pencil drawings you tend to do a bit of a quiet study but I will move on to charcoal now. So I'll set that one aside. Just you certainly don't want to become too precious about your marks. You can see how if I had more time I'd build this one up with tone. I'll just put some fast marks on. Okay, I'll set that aside and we'll go on to a quick exercise with charcoal, which will be more suited to people who like tone. So what I'm going to do here is just put a light ground over this paper. So you'd need a thick piece of charcoal for that. And I just give it a light dust, just with the tissue like that. Just looking at that pair and thinking about the axis. So it's on a slight lean. So I'm going to come down here and I'm just going to identify where that might go. Again, I'm going to set up that cross down at the base and I'm going to start building up the ellipses again and with a pair you can think about the two sections you've got the main sphere and then you've got the cone which is separate and you've got the stalk 
So I'm looking at that base, I'm looking at angles, the tilt, I'm coming in and I'm thinking about that cone with the upper part of the pear. I'm thinking about perspective. I've got a plane on the side here, plane on the side, front, another plane. I'm not too concerned about that shadow, but I'll just put some lines in there just to identify where it is. Making the lines darker at the base to give the object a sense of weight. These are called contour lines. You leave it some space between the lines, cross hatching, cross hatching lines and contour lines. I'm combining them here. So, just to build up the curve in the fruit, I'm going to build up some contour lines and some cross hatching. Just reinforce the directions of the planes. And I can make that darker here at the front just to pull the form forward and closer to me. I'm following that shadow around on the pair and I'm watching out for what we refer to as reflected light. So just light on the edges of the pair. And I'm going to keep those areas light. I'll build up the curves here on the side. So I'm building up a series of broken lines rather than a continuous line because a continuous line will flatten the form. So I'll have a look at that stem. It's good to have a sharp edge on your charcoal when you're doing an, an area like that. So just starting with that stem and I've got that sharp edge on the piece of charcoal. Just follow that curve around. So again you don't need to worry about your proportions. It's really about getting the concept of developing the three-dimensional form, developing the lights and darks. So you can come in with the kneadable rubber, actually. I'll Just do a bit more blocking on the major plane changes. And I'll use this kneadable eraser just to, to draw again. It becomes a tool and I'm just playing with some of the highlights. Just pulling them out. And in a sense, you can use this eraser just to build up the sense of drama in the drawing. So even though it's just a humble old piece of fruit, you can develop it into quite an exciting drawing just by playing with the materials. I think it's the responsibility of the artist to make the drawing exciting. The object doesn't necessarily need to be exciting. And I can work back over that and I can go backwards and forwards, making things lighter and darker. And I can also bring the line back into it. So 
so I can come in with this line build up some contour lines And I should make that shadow round because really the shadow needs to reflect the form. So I'd be wanting to have a to introduce some curves into that shadow. So that's the final technique I wanted to go through today. So we're basically using pencil with our organic forms, with the structural forms, and using charcoal here just to use this different technique that allows you to concentrate on a stronger contrast with your lights and darks. Thank you for taking the time to watch this presentation. I hope I've been able to provide further insight into the process of drawing. And it's over to you now to take up the challenge of investigating and exploring the discipline of drawing. Mm -hmm.